In this video, I'm going to introduce you to an interesting Sudoku variant called Sandwich Sudoku. Now, Sandwich Sudoku follows the same rules as regular Sudoku in that every row, column, and block must contain the digits 1 to 9, and each row and column block must have unique digits. Where Sandwich Sudoku differs is that if you look at the puzzle over here, along every row and every column there is a number. Now what these numbers represent is the sum of the digits between the 1 and the 9. So for example in the first row there's a 0. This means that the sum of the digits between the 1 and 9 is 0. In other words the 1 and the 9 are going to be adjacent. Same for row 2, and if we look at row 3, the sum of digits is 5. That means that there's either a 2 and a 3 between the 1 and 9, or there's the 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this Sudoku sandwich puzzle here. As you can see, typically it starts with many, much fewer given numbers than a regular Sudoku. And that's because you need to use the strategies of all these sandwich totals for each row and column. And the easiest way to start solving this puzzle is to look where the 1s and the 9s go. So let's do that. Okay, if we look at this middle row over here that needs a 9, we've got a 9 in the row above, below. So this block has got a 9, that block's got a 9, which means for this row, the 9 must be one of those cells. But of course there's already a 9 in that row, so it can't be that one. Now, if we try to place a 9 over here, we see that the sum of the digits between the 1 and the 9 for this column is 16, but there's only one cell. So that can't possibly be 16. So we know the 9 cannot go there. Therefore, the 9 must go there. And because in this row there's 0 between the 1 and the 9, we know that that must be a 1. Okay, let's have a look at this first column. It's 2 between the 1 and 9. So the only way you can have a 2 is the number 2. So we can't have the 2 there and the 1 because there's an 8 there. So therefore, that must be a 2 and that must be the 1. Okay, now let's see. Let's have a look at this row over here. Where does the 9 go here? Well, it's a little tricky. If you click on the number 17, it will show you all the different digit combinations that can make up 17. And if we have a look here, we see that it's either three digits or four digits to make up 17. So if it was four digits, one, two, three, four, the 9 would have to go there. But of course, it can't go there because there's a 9 in this column. Therefore, it has to be 3 digits to make the 17, and we know that that now is a 9. And if we look at this column here, 4, the only combination is the number 4. Well, if we put the 4 there, then the 1 would have to go there, and of course it can't because there's already a 1 in that row. So therefore, that must be a 4, and that must be the 1. Now, another thing to look out for is the number 35. Because all the digits from 1 to 9 always total 45. And if we take away the 1 and 9, we get a total of 35. So whenever you see a 35, it means that the 1 and the 9 are at the ends of that row or column. Okay, so that contains the 1 and 9, and that contains the 1 and 9. But of course we've got a 1 in this row, so that has to be a 9, and therefore that will be a 1. Now, here we have a 1 and a 9 on this last row, and the sum total is 2, so of course that has to be a 2. And let's have a look what else we can see here. Okay. 
this row over here, we have a 0, so the 1 is next to the 9. It can't be in that cell because there's a 1 now, so therefore that's a 1. And again now we need 1 and 9 in row 2 next to each other. Well, 1 and 9 can't go in this block, there's already a 1. 1 and the 9 can't go in this block because there's already a 1, so they must be in these two cells. And there's already a 9 1 there, so that is 1 and that's 9. Okay, let's just check. So far the solution is correct. And over here on the first row we've got a 1, so the 9 needs to be adjacent, it can't be there because we have 1 in that column, so that's a 9. Now let's have a look where the 9 goes in this row over here. Well, if it's 5, it's either a 5 or a 2 and a 3. Now if we had a 2 and a 3 combination there, the 9 would have to go in this column, which it can't because there's already one. So therefore, this has to be a 5, and the 9 goes over there. Okay, so we have the 1 and 9 in the first row, second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row. Let's have a look at this row over here. Where does the 1 go? Okay, so combinations for 7 is either a 7, 2, 5, or a 3 and a 4. Now if it's a 2 or 5 or 3 or 4, the 1 would have to go there or there, but it can't because both of those columns already have a 1. So therefore, this combination has to be a 7, which goes there, and the 1 goes there. Okay, let's see. Let's have a look at this column over here, the 1 and the 9, those two cells, this total 11. So it's either a 3 and an 8 in there, 4 and a 7, or a 5 and a 6. Now, Five is already there, so it can't be the five and the six. It could be a four and a seven. So we don't know yet. Or it could be a three and an eight. So we don't know that yet. Okay, uh, now we're missing a one in this column, and it looks like the only place the one can go is there. Okay, so now let's look at, this obviously then has to be a 6 because it's between the 1 and 9, so that's a 6. And let's now have a look at those three cells between the 1 and 9. Combination, they have to be 17, okay, and they need to have a 6 in it. So it can't be the 278 because there's already an 8 in that row. Can't be that one, can't be that one. So it's got to be the 4, 6, and 7. So we've got the 6. So these two cells here are a 4 and a 7. Well, the 7 can't go there, so we know the 7 goes there, and the 4 goes there. Okay, now we can go back to look at those two cells there, make up 11. It could be 3 and 8. They can't be the 4 and 7 because we've got a 7 already in those two rows. And it can't be the 5 and 6 because there's a 5 in that column. So it has to be the 3 and the 8. And we already have an 8 there, so that one must be the 8. And that must be the 3. Okay, and uh, this, this on the last column is a 4. We already have the 1 and 9, so that's the 4. We already have the 1 and 9 there, so there's 2, and that's a 2. And if we look at this row, it's missing a 2, it can't go there, so that must be the 2, and that will be 5. And if we have a look, there's a 2, um, there has to be a 2 in this row, in this block, because there's a 2 already can't be there, so that has to be a 2. If we look here, there's an 8 in this column. Column has got to be an 8 over here in this block. 
can't go there because of that 8. So we know that that's 8. There's a 5 in that row, 5 in that row. The only place left for a 5 in the first row is there. And let's see, there's a 2 in this block. So for this row, the 2 can't go there, there. Um, 2 can't go there or there, so that one must be the 2. And looking again at the 2's on the top row, um, 2 can't be in those two positions because there's one in the block. It can't be there or there, so that one must be a 2. Okay, let's come down to this 9 and 1 in this row and figure out what those three cells are. We know they total 13, and they're three digits, and they have to have a 2 in it. So there's a 2, so 3 and 8 are possible for those two. Can't be the 4 and 7, they're already in the block, and it can't be our 6, but that's in the block. 6 is already in the block. So the only way that that can be satisfied is if that cell contains 3 or 8, and that cell contains 3 or 8. We don't know yet which. Okay, now here's another interesting sort of strategy to look at. If we look at this column over here, the total between the 1 and the 9 is 20. That means that the cells outside of the 1 and 9 sandwich must equal 45, which is the total for all the digits, minus the 1 and the 9, which is 35, minus the 20, which is those cells. So therefore, we know that these three cells equal 15. And if we take away the 7, we know that these two cells have to equal 8. Now there's another little useful tool here, if I use this button here, I can say for two cells, what's the total I'm interested in is 8, what are the combinations? Well it's either 2, 6 or 3, 5. So we know there can't be 2, 6, it has to be a 3 and a 5 combination here for those two cells. And we know one of those has to be the 3, so therefore that cell has to be 5, and if that cell is the 5, that has to be the 3, and that has to be the 8. Let's just check. Yep, that's correct so far. So that's another useful thing to look at, is not only the total of the cells between the 1 and 9, but also the total of the cells outside of the 1 and 9, and they will always equal 35 minus the total of the cells inside the 1 and 9. Okay, let's have a look here. We've got an 8 there, an 8 there, an 8 there, and 8 in this row, one of those two. There's an 8 there, so that has to be an 8. We have a 5, 5, that one has to be a 5. I think for the rest of this puzzle it's probably able to be solved with just the very basic strategies of Sudoku. So I think we'll leave the puzzle solving at this point. Well, I hope that this has given you enough ideas as to go about solving a sandwich Sudoku and uh, enjoy it. <laughs>